Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now traditionally, thin clients are lightweight computers optimized for establishing a remote connection with a server-based computing environment. Ha, thanks Wikipedia. They run from resources stored on a central server instead of a localized hard drive. Say you've got a big business with multiple employees who all need computer access. You could give them all desktop PCs, which of course comes with the responsibility of maintaining each one, or you could give them all thin clients, which are cheaper, have no moving parts, and make no noise, perfect for those office environments. Instead of the operating system being on the thin client itself, it's essentially streamed from the main server PC to this mini machine. But what if you wanted to install an operating system directly on one of these and use it like you would, say, that PC or laptop you've been watching this video on? Well, let's talk about that. So picking one of these up won't cost you too much at all these days. In fact, I paid around £20 for this HP T520. Because they never needed the power to independently support programs, you might find that the specs of these things seems a little lacklustre, more often than not offering tiny storage capacities too. This one for example uses an 8GB SSD, 4 gigs of RAM and not much else. The main point of interest though is the AMD GX212JC processor, along with the integrated Radeon R2E graphics. Never heard of them? Well let me assure you that it's probably for the best. Obviously an 8GB SSD is next to useless in 2019, but it does encourage the installation of say Linux, which in all honesty would be best for using on one of these. But I'll be exploring that in a different video because I have other plans for this machine later down the line. Today is all about Windows and how well this can or can't handle it. First things first, and I needed to replace the storage with something a little bigger. Therefore, I opted for a 240GB M2 SSD which was not only bigger in size, but uh, bigger in size. I should have thought this through a little more, but with some persistence I managed to get this little drive in here almost perfectly. Okay, so it's not ideal, but if it works, it works. Let the suffering, I mean fun, begin. So let me tell you right off the bat that Windows 10 in performance mode with all the animations disabled still ran absolutely diabolically. Stupidly, I bought two of these, so to show off the processing power, I'm going to start the Cinebench R15 multi-core test on one, while we take a look at some gaming benchmarks on another. Keep your eye on the time here. A quick look at GPU-Z here reveals the full extent of the impending disaster. Sorry about the 2009 record your COD commentary off your TV style video, the thin client doesn't have an HDMI port for my capture device. So, with both cores of this dual core chip already maxing out at 100% usage, through doing nothing other than existing, it was time to get into some games. So what childhood was complete without the Simpsons hit and run, like the child's version of Grand Theft Auto? I absolutely love this game. Now please forgive me, today there are no official statistics on screen in terms of the average frame rate, 1% low, things like that. Because this started as me just messing around, and when I tried to run, fraps at the same time, the whole system just decided it wasn't having any of it, and crashed this opening game. So I thought I'll just talk to you about the performance as it unfolded, a little bit of live commentary. Now with the Simpsons hit and run here at 720p, you can expect about 50 to 60 frames per second most of the time. There aren't really any advanced graphics options to choose from. Just set your resolution in the settings and you're good to go. It's hardly the most graphically impressive game out there either, so it doesn't really matter how it looks. But, to be honest, it is still very fun, even in 2019, and it runs surprisingly well on the Thin Client 2. Okay, a quick look back at Cinebench. We started the multi-core test at 1547. It's now 1550, we're three minutes in, and I'd say the test looks about halfway done. So on to the next game. Now I'll be honest, I thought this was going to be limited to games like Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2, the original top-down versions of the game, but it can in fact handle Grand Theft Auto 3 and therefore Vice City and San Andreas just fine as well, with around 50 frames per second at 900p. You can see that both the processor and the GPU cores here aren't really struggling all that much, in fact they're pretty well paired in this game, but 
as I say, expect to see around 50 to 60 frames per second. The settings were left as default. This is how the game saw fit to run itself on this hardware, and you'll have a pretty decent time with most of the 3D Universe GTA games. As I say, Vice City and San Andreas should also run okay. San Andreas might be a little more of a struggle, but you should still see at least 30 frames per second if you turn the settings down to low. Okay, it's been five minutes since we started the Cinebench R15 test. I thought we were halfway done before, but it seems that we've jammed a little bit. I'm not even going to bother running the single core test after this, because I'm sure this will be disastrous enough. I can't wait to see what score we get with the AMD CPU here that I've forgotten the name of since beginning this recording. Now, the original Half-Life has no problem running here. In fact, the CPU is struggling more than the GPU in this case, often touching at 98-99% usage, but I wouldn't say it's holding the graphics back because as you can see now it has dropped a little bit. There will be some situations where the CPU does struggle, but the graphics chip in this thing is just plodding along absolutely fine. Now in terms of performance you're going to see between 50 and 100 frames per second most of the time here which means that you should still be able to play Half-Life 2 as well on this PC. Checking back in with Cinebench R15 it's been nearly 10 minutes and the test has still not completed it is getting there though look at it go it's really giving it a good try. Okay, so let's play some old school Battlefield 2. We're playing a bit of single player online here. As you can see, we're running at 720p. The game's running anywhere between 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second. When the combat heats up, expect a few drops. Hardly a graphically impressive game is Battlefield 2, but it still is a very fun one and I still enjoy playing it on a near weekly basis, if I'm honest. I installed it on this PC not expecting much, but there will be a few moments of slowdown here and there, I'll admit. Overall though, well, you can expect to have a pretty decent time. Let me just wipe out this guy if I can. The gun's overheating, I'm going to have to go on foot here. There we go. Lovely. We saw a drop down to the high 20s there, something that will occur on occasion, but it really isn't too bad. And again, I was surprised by this result. We're 12 minutes into the Cinebench R15 test and things are still going swimmingly. We're almost there now, surely any day. So this is Far Cry 2 and it ran best at 1024x768. Interestingly, when I dropped the resolution down to 800x600, as you'll see in a minute, it ran worse than it did at 1024x768, which was quite odd. And with the aforementioned resolution, you'll gain close to 30 frames per second on average, which is very surprising. Okay, so nearly 20 minutes later, and the Cinebench R15 test is complete, and we have a score of 37. What a beast. Right, so let's talk about the HP ThinCline. Is it worth buying one of these to repurpose it, so to speak, for use as a standard desktop or gaming PC? Well, often these are for sale at such low prices because companies upgrade and they just either sell off the old ones to individuals or other businesses who then sell them on in bulk on places like eBay. And you can pick one up, as I say, for around 30 or £40 pounds here in the UK. In fact, if you're paying more than that, I'd say you're paying too much for a thin client. If you stick Windows on it, I'd advise, say, an older operating system like Windows 7. Despite how out of date it might be, it will run a lot better than Windows 10. Alternatively, something like Linux would be best, or Ubuntu, anything like that that's going to be fairly lightweight to make the most out of the hardware that's in this thing, especially if yours comes with a small hard drive like this one, though you can always upgrade that with an M2 SSD, but bear in mind the cost of that too. Is it worth then just buying a cheaper, used and older desktop PC, say a Dell Optiplex for similar money, with a traditional hard drive and something that's going to perform perhaps a little bit better in Windows? I can't say how well something like that would game, um, considering you'd probably be relying on Intel GMA graphics in that case, but here the Radeon R2E does quite well. Uh, better than I thought initially in a lot of games as well, which was certainly nice to see. With everything said, and the HP tested today, this isn't the last time you'll see it, but for now, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.